UFC Vegas 67, a train wreck, the first event of the year, an absolute train wreck. We have fighters pulling out left and right due to injury. Shavkat off the card, Kelvin Gastelum off the card, Omar Morales off the card, Sijari Eubanks missed weight, had issues with the weight cut, she's off the card. So now we're down to 11 fights. I'm going to do some quick picks here. UFC Vegas 67, we have 11 fights here. Let's make the predictions and we'll go top to bottom. So Sean Strickland steps in on short notice, taking on Nazardin Imovov. That's the new main event. And honestly, I was already saying that I liked Kelvin Gastelum because of the cardio, because of the durability, the ability to wrestle. Strickland, man, I know he's coming in short notice. He just fought a month ago, but we know Sean Strickland. The dude absolutely loves to fight. I don't think he's going to have a problem. I think the cardio is going to be there as normal. I think the output is going to be there. And I will take it even one step further. I think he's pissed off. The Jared Cannonier fight, he thought he should have won. I could definitely see him winning that fight. But now he needs more of that sense of urgency. He can't just coast by with the output. He needs to find a finish. Imovov, as I've said before, the cardio, questionable. He came in light. He weighed in at like 194. Not really sure what to take away there. But, you know, Sean's coming in around 205. I think he'll be able to stuff any sort of takedowns that Imovov has. On the, on the feet over five rounds, I'll take a flyer on Sean Strickland, and I'll even say he finds the finish. Imovov starts to gas after round two into round three, and we see a Sean Strickland TKO in round four. Let's keep going. Damon Jackson taking on Dan Ige. I already made my pick on this one. Early in the week, I said I was all over Damon Jackson. I got to be honest, I'm a little bit nervous. More nervous than I was before. Dan Ige, you know, a very durable guy, very well-rounded, has gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the division's best. And this is a pretty big step down for him to take on Damon Jackson. So, yeah, I can see a world where D Dan Ige wins this fight, you know, probably by decision, but I think he also could find the finish. We could see, like, a round three TKO for Dan Ige. Um, but I got to stick to my guns here. I said Damon Jackson was one of the bets of the night for me earlier in the week. I got to stick with it. So I'll go with Damon Jackson by decision. But honestly, canceling all my bets, voiding them all, cashing out. Moving on. Punahel Soriano taking on Roman Kopilov. Made this pick already. I'm sticking with uh, Punahel Soriano. He's just going to throw the bigger shots. He's going to deal more damage. He is a wrestler. I know he has that somewhere in his arsenal. Doesn't use it, fell in love with the hands, fell in love with the power, wants to knock dudes out. This could be a live betting situation where if Soriano goes heavy round one, starts to gas, Kopilov could take over. Um, but I'm going to stick with Soriano to win this one. Let's go with a round two TKO. Catlin Vieira taking on Rocky Pennington. This opened as a pick -em. It has basically stayed as a pick -em. I listened to a number of podcasts. Everybody is split on this 50-50. These two women stack up so well with each other. They have the same style of fighting. They're bullies. They're aggressive. They're strong for the division. They're going to look to work in the clinch here. I'm going to go with the younger fighter in Ketlin Vieira. I think she edges out a decision. I love the split decision prop here. I think it's coming in around plus 350. So that's my that's going to be my bet and my pick. I'm taking Ketlin Vieira to win by decision, and I'll be betting the split the split decision prop. Next up, Cousin Umar taking on Hayoni Barcelos. This line, you know, I don't know where it opened, but it has exploded. I think I got him in a parlay around like minus 600, Cousin Umar. That's now at like minus 1,000. You, that's unbettable. You have to take a shot on Umar by decision, which is like minus 200 to get the submission or the TKO is probably like plus 200 area. Um, I love Hayoni Barcelos. He's very well-rounded. I think he can create some problems. Good takedown defenses. If he's able to keep Umar on the feet, that's his best bet. But, you know, you could take a flyer on the underdog because that's where the value is. But making my prediction, my pick here, I think Umar is going to win. I'll give Barcelos some credit here. I think it goes to decision. I'll take Umar 
unanimous decision. Next up, Javid Basharat taking on Mendonca. I mean, this is this is going to be a good fight. I like Mendonca as a prospect, as I said earlier in the week here. Um, but Javid Basharat has just proven himself. He's a prospect, but he is a high quality, top level guy. Checks all the boxes off. He's very well rounded. If it stays on the feet, he'll have success. If it goes to the ground, he'll have success. I don't see him losing. I think even the price here, it's like a minus 320 range. Makes him a really good parlay piece. It really does. Um, he could find the finish, but he seems very comfortable just going to decision, dominating fights. I think Javad Basharat takes this one. Unanimous decision. Next up, Ribeiro taking on <laughs> Al Hassan, man. Coin flip. Don't think the line has really moved. I think Ribeiro right now is technically the underdog. Um, a lot of people think this fight is going under. That was my original reaction was that this fight was going under. Someone's getting knocked out. I'm sticking with Ribeiro to win round one TKO. But, you know, listening to some other people's opinions, I think Al Hassan could be a decent play here. But I'm just not getting on the side of the 37-year-old who seems to gas after round one. I know Ribeiro usually doesn't go past round one himself, um, but I'm just banking on this one. Someone's going out in round one. Both these dudes come out swinging hard, and I'm going with Ribeiro, round one. Rebecca taking on Fiore. Well, this is one of those uh, Omar Morales was supposed to fight. He's out due to injury. Fiore stepping in. New England cartel, BJJ specialist. That's the way that he would win this fight, but Rebecca... You know, he's got, what, double, triple the fights of Fiore. He seems to have, you know, all the tools. I think he's a little small for this division. That's the one knock I have on him. But the dude's an absolute bulldog. Um, he's just a brute force, good strength, good power. He can definitely finish this fight standing. And if it goes to the ground, you know, the top control, the ground and pound, the grappling is all there. So I think I expect him to win. He's a massive favorite. Not going to back Fiore. I'm going to take a small, tiny, Tiny flyer on Fiore to win by submission, but that's about it. Give me Rebecca to win, and we'll go with the round two TKO. Next up, Nascimento taking on Hernandez. You know, the more I'm looking into this one, this one feels like it could be the trap bet. Both of these guys have gone to split decision multiple times in their last few fights. They keep it very close. They seem to stack up very close. You know, I think Nascimento definitely deserves to be the favorite here. Um, but he's coming in at that like minus 350 range. And I'm just, I'm not agreeing with that line. Don't feel comfortable putting him into parlays. Definitely not taking the money line there. Um, like I said, I think they stack up very well. I'm going to lean towards Nascimento here to win by decision. This is another one of those fights where you can take the flyer on a, on a split prop. And this one pays out a little bit better. It's a plus 450 for this to go to split decision. That's where my money's going to be on this fight. Small lean toward Nascimento by decision. Outside of that, nothing else. Uh, Argueta taking on Aguere. And again, Aguere is coming in here on short notice, replacing another guy who had to pull out, I believe, due to injury. This was Isaac Dolgarian. And that was actually going to be a great fight. Argueta versus Dolgarian. Two guys, vicious, aggressive finishers. Um, and I thought Argueta was going to win that fight. And the fact that he's getting Aguere here on short notice. Very short notice. And you look at this guy. This guy has faced his last three opponents, 0-2, 0-1, 0-1. He's a 7-0 pro record, obviously fighting cans, padding the record. Three TKOs, four submissions. It seems like his best bet is to win this fight by submission. But I think Argueta, yeah, he's a big favorite for a guy who hasn't proven himself yet. I think he's like a minus 500, minus 600 range right now. But Argueta should win this fight. I think he'll just go in there, get it done. He's explosive. I'll go with a round one TKO for Argueta. And then the last fight here, Charles Johnson taking on Jimmy Flick. And I think this is a great spot for Charles Johnson to go in there, get another win in the UFC. Jimmy Flick retired two years ago. Um, definitely a submission specialist, without a doubt. That's where he wants this fight to go. But Charles Johnson, good takedown defense. He gets up. You know, even if it gets into a grappling exchange, he has good grappling to fend off anything that Jimmy Flick might have. And then if it's standing on the feet, it's Charles Johnson all day. Jimmy Flick, we've seen it before, four or five times in his career, he has been finished by knockout or TKO. 
Charles Johnson all day. Great parlay piece coming in around that minus 320 range. Definitely like him in this spot. Give me Charles Johnson by round two, TKO. And that's all I got. Until next time, guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm Steve at the MMA Minute. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And we'll see you next time.